Rich Gase. It's Peter Rosenberg and Chris Carlin. How are you, man? Good. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Um, I'll, I'll st let's start out real quick with uh, what was, I guess, the, 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 the trending topic out of Thursday's game, which was you and your quarterback, uh, you know, showing some, um, being demonstrative, let's say, on the sideline. I'll just say this. When you took the job, did you realize that every sort of moment like that on a New York sideline is a bigger deal than anywhere else? Yeah, I think I had a, a decent idea, but obviously you learn a lot as you go through the steps of this job. And in the moment, like how quickly do you realize, oh, wait, we're kind of yelling in front of everybody. I'm going to be hearing about this for probably a week or so. Yeah, especially since we weren't even yelling at each other. That's the worst part is we were actually both upset about the same thing, and it was something that happened outside of what he did. Yeah, Adam, when you look at, at Sam now in a game like that, where do you put him in terms of his development? I know you've talked about him improving and the things that we don't necessarily see, but where do you put him in terms of his, uh, his, his process of becoming a star NFL quarterback? Well, he's, he's made huge strides as the season's gone on this last the first half that he played in this last game was really really good you know he he had that he had a one bad error there at the end which was an interception which i know he wishes he could have back you know the second half we we were a little too up and down you know we, we were a little bit all over the place but for the majority of the season i mean he keeps doing something within that game that he hadn't done the week before so that when we go back and watch these things and we talk through them just kind of the way that he's thinking through stuff has really been something that gets everybody excited okay so when it's the things that we don't see give us an example of the things that we don't see where he has really gotten better well just controlling the line of scrimmage checking the plays versus certain blitzes like this last game he got to some stuff that he had never done before you know he saw it coming you know probably a couple of these third down conversions that we had in this last game were because of him changing the play at the line of scrimmage because he saw the defense and he he got us out of a, a bad play and into a good one and to me those are, that's a that's a big step considering before we we weren't quite getting to that point where it was more coming back to the sideline and man I wish I would have went to this now now he's doing it which is that's exciting for me because now it's your call and plays and you're trying to give him the right stuff, but if it's not good, he's getting to something different. Is that kind of more a, a case of your system that he's getting used to versus what he had last year, and how much does that factor into when you look at a guy's development? Here's a guy that in two years has worked with two different systems offensively. Yeah, I mean, really, if you think about it, it's three and three years. If you count if you count. Yeah, college. that's true. Yeah. So, I mean, he's had a lot of... A lot of different. He's had a lot of change, and I do think with the three weeks he had to spend away from here wasn't ideal for him. I felt like we were really kind of heading in the right direction, and then he had to go away and was kind of we had to press pause for a second, kind of get him back in his rhythm. And now I feel like every week he's coming in, he's coming in with ideas, he's coming in with thoughts before we even meet, where he's telling me, hey, I'm thinking this, this, and this if we get these looks, or if you call something on third down, I'm going to get to this, or, you know, this is my other option. And he's really, he's telling me a lot of the times of what he's thinking before we even get there. He, uh, Sam came to our, our party on Friday and was great, took pictures of people, hung out. He seems to be such an unusually mature and sweet kid. Does he really stand sort of stand out amongst other young players you've known in this league? I would say yes. I don't I don't think I've been around a guy his age before that's as mature as he is. And he like just how how much he cares about other people where he wants to, them to have success and he always puts himself last. And that's there's something to be said about him in that aspect. I mean he really does care about he wants all his guys to have success and he's not he never talks about his own stats he never talks about anything with himself it's always about somebody else adam gase with us it's the adam gase report here on the michael k show you said the other day there is going to be a point where he is going to be a really good player how far away is that you know it's hard to put a timetable on i just if i i just keep seeing the strides that that you need to make to become a really good player and you know some weeks it's it's 
three or four things in one game, and then once some weeks it'll be one. You know, but I just feel like if we keep trending in the direction that we're trending, which is, I I just don't have I have no doubt that that's going to happen because he works so hard, he puts so much time in when he's outside of this building, and it's just another. You know, off season and training camp, I think he's just going to be so much better than he was in year one of this this system. Le'Veon Bell, fresh out of the bowling alley, back onto the field, and looked more like the Le'Veon Bell that we expect to see. Um, what was what was different uh, for Le'Veon in Baltimore? No, that was good, by the way. Thank you. That was that was, that was good. I mean, come on, we got to mention it. Was slick. It's a, yeah. He yeah. bowled a two fifty one for God's sake. Yeah, like I'm just that. impressed. It's kind of under the radar there. That was good. <laughs> um, I just you know. I felt like the offense line did a great job. One, getting those guys covered up. It's something that we talk about all the time where that's where it starts. We always talk about let's get our guys to the second level. And Le'Veon, that's been what we've been trying to do all year is just get him to the safeties. Like see what happens if we can get him to run through an arm tackle at the linebacker spot, get him in the second level. That happened a little bit more. I think he did a really good job of taking what they gave us to where instead of trying to make this spectacular play, he, he knew, hey, four and five yards for us right now is really good because we needed to stay ahead of the sticks. That was a big point of emphasis for us going in this game. We wanted to occupy the ball. We wanted to keep their offense off the field. That was something that we did in the first half. We didn't quite do in the second. The, there are people who speculate that Le'Veon does not have a, a long-term future with the Jets. How important do you think Le'Veon could be to this team moving forward? I, th- I, th- I love the, what he brings to the table. I really think that we haven't maximized all his his talents quite yet. I mean, it's just we got kind of caught in a, in a weird situation at the beginning of the season where we were counting on him to really just kind of grind out the game and, and occupy the ball and keep his head in the sticks. Team started loading up the box. I think he took a lot of shots early in the season, which kind of probably didn't feel great for him and probably slowed him down a little bit. But... You know, we've had some games where, you know, you see see him juiced up and he's he's feeling good and he's able to hit those holes and we open those things up and we get him involved in the passing game and you know, we've had some, some good games with him. We just gotta we gotta get to the point where I'm calling it well enough to where he's been able where he can be consistent, you know, and we can get him in the rhythm early in the in the into the game. Adam, it felt like um when you look at his history in Pittsburgh and, and the type of running back he is, he's always been a very patient guy and then kind of explodes. And it felt like the other night was kind of the first time this year that we saw him in that running style. Is that fair to say? Had he been running the ball or approaching the run game a little bit differently, maybe not as patient just to try to fit in before this? Uh, I think it's just trying to figure out, because we've had some moving pieces up front. I think he's just been trying to figure out who who he's working with and how they, it all kind of ties together. I think that's the positive thing about him practicing the way he does is is he's trying to get in that rhythm. You know, he's trying to figure out, like, all right, how are they going to block this? How's this going to look? And you're trying to get the right look on scout team. It's always it's always a little more difficult when you're playing a 3-4 team and they played a little different than, you know, a 4-3 team and kind of how the guys, you know, are they two-gap? And, you know, you're trying to get those looks in practice. You don't always get always get that. But I think he's, he's getting a better feel, especially here towards the end of the season, of how these guys are doing things. And, and he's either adjusting or he's kind of tailoring his running style to kind of what how our guys are blocking some stuff. Uh, last one on him. Have you ever bowled a 251? No. <laughs> Not even close. Not even close. <laughs> uh, now, is he that talented a dude that it wouldn't surprise you that he was actually that good at bowling? That wouldn't surprise me. Um, so... Speaking of uh, unbelievable talent, one thing Sam talked about was the frustration last week that things started good against the Ravens, but Lamar Jackson's in a place right now where where Sam basically said, you know, every time they got off the field, you guys got off the field without points, he almost knew he'd be coming back in the game in a bigger hole because that's how good that Ravens offense is right now. How good is it up close, and what can you do to really slow them down? Yeah, it's tough. It's it's. I mean, when you watch him play, play live, I, I think the only comparison I can even think of is probably like my second year in the league. I saw Michael Vick play and watching him throwing the ball the way he, he could throw the ball and the way that he could make guys miss and just kind of how scary his speed was up at, up close when you saw him turn the corner and guys were just not, they, they're struggling to catch him and he looks like he's not even running. 
you know, I think Lamar's just the game looks slow for him right now. You know, he's playing fast, and then just everybody else is just at a different speed. You know, they're a gear behind, and you know, it's it's tough. You you got to find a way to try to find an incompletion, try to find a, a zero or negative play there, and you know, try to get off the field to where. And then on offense, you got to when that happens, you got to you got to counter it, and you got to find a way to put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, Sam said the same thing. You basically just have to keep scoring. I mean, the one thing I see, coach, and I'm curious because you're the quarterback guru, is that Vic had a bigger arm, right? He had an absolute monster arm. But Lamar at this point appears to have a little bit more discipline with how he uses his arm and, and where he puts the football. Would you say that's true? Because I don't uh, – Michael Vick never had a completion percentage like the kind Lamar Jackson has right now. It's hard for me to really compare in that aspect of it. I mean, I was, I was 23, 24 years old when I saw him play live. So, I mean, it seems like an eternity ago. I, would, I mean, Lamar looks, looks good. You know, throwing the ball, especially down the field. I mean, he's he's hitting those shots. I mean, when everybody's trying to stop the run, and then he's getting those opportunities where he's throwing a post or a corner out, whatever it is. I mean, he's hitting those things. You know, whether it's tight coverage or guys wide open, he's just not missing those big plays. So we're we've actually been having some fun today talking quarterbacks with how good uh, Breeze is and his numbers. Now we've been comparing. Uh, Breeze and Rodgers. First of all, just coaching against Drew Breeze, you obviously coached uh, Peyton Manning, had tremendous success with him. Where do you put Drew Breeze in the all-time great conversation at this point? I mean, he's up there. It's hard to, it's hard to like, number those guys. I just know when you're around them, they're, it's impressive to be around. I mean, 29 to 30 is ridiculous. I mean, just to, just to even think about how He's talking about how he he wished he would have completed that one one pass that he missed. I mean, it's just it's unbelievable to even to be close to that. Is there a stat that you, as a quarterback guy, would have put above all else for people like us who are you know we don't know it as intimately as you do, but we talk about stats all the time. Is there one that you put above all else when you're evaluating a quarterback? I think mean, I. I always look at third down and red zone. Those are the two. Those are two areas where if a guy's a successful quarterback on third down and, and he's throwing touchdown passes in the red zone or his team's getting in the in the end zone, you know, in the red zone, those are those are two areas that you can't really mask on, you know, with all the analytics stuff. You know, you either get the conversion or you don't. A lot of people are calling us up right now and basically saying, ah, oh, you can't put Drew Brees in this. We were, we were comparing Brees and Rodgers. And a lot of people are calling up going, you can't compare Brees and Rodgers because Brees plays in the Dome. Um, how much? Now, obviously, you coached Peyton when he was in Denver, but mo most of his success came in Indianapolis. How much of a factor is that, or is that just something us Yo-Yo fans talk about? I think every, every situation is different. I mean, I think three years I was with Peyton, like those were, you know, two of those three years were were ridiculous numbers for him, and he played majority of games outside. So, I mean, his best season ever was when he was in Denver, you know, statistically. So, I mean, it's 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 hard to say. Hey, how big of a difference does that make? Um, I mean, it's I, I think it is impressive that when you're in Green Bay and, and you have the kind of numbers that Favre and, and Aaron Rodgers have had, it's. You know, they've played in plenty of bad weather games considering that they got to go to Chicago. You know, obviously, they got to play indoors at Minnesota and, and Detroit. But, I mean, they're playing a lot of out outdoor games in bad weather. So you were talking about the 2013 5,400-yard, 55-touchdown, 10-pick season for Peyton. Yep. That must have been fun. <laughs> yeah, I would, I, it, it's crazy to even think back of... We were at a point where I think he was he was something like 25 touchdowns, no picks, or something like just something crazy. Adam Gase with us, uh, Pittsburgh this week. Uh, Steelers defense. What have you seen as far as what you have to go after and attack here in you know preparing for a game like this? Their defense is playing really well right now. I'm I'm, I'm sure you guys watched the game the other night, and you can see the problems they give. Obviously, they, they're their two outside pass rushers are, are really good. I mean. You know, T.J. Watt's playing about as good as anybody in the NFL right now. I think their interior guys up front are, 
a very tough, tough matchup for everybody, and, and we know that's where really everything's going to start, start and stop is how we handle their front. And then, you know, on the back end, Minka Fitzpatrick's, you know, he's benefiting for with how those guys up front are playing, how the corners are playing. He's been, been able to be real aggressive and, you know, having as many interceptions as he has this year is – you know, that's going to be something that we got to account for. Is it their system that has allowed him to have that kind of success this quickly? Uh, I don't know. It's probably a little bit of the system, but that that's who he is. I mean, that was the whole reason why he was drafted was because the ball just finds him. Yeah. You know, it just, I mean, it was always like that in practice. It was, I remember like the first three weeks he was there, it was like once a day some ball would get tipped up and he'd be there picking it off. Hey, Coach, good luck this weekend, and I'm not going to talk to you, so Merry Christmas. Thanks for everything this year. We appreciate it. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.